Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome back from Christmas break. This is the Monday, January 16th, 2023 edition of the Basement Academy. We have been off for three weeks. Uh, I think the last we recorded was Friday, December 23rd. We were recovering Advent. I expect by now most of you have put your Christmas decorations away. The 12 days of Christmas are over. We're into the new year and let's dive back in together. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day. Uh, we will start with our morning psalm, Psalm 46. This is the psalm that Martin Luther based his hymn, A Mighty Fortress, uh, upon. And so just a wonderful, wonderful psalm and seems to speak to the realities that I'll be addressing uh, today and in these coming days. And so Psalm 46 is for the director of music of the Sons of Korah. It is a song. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And everybody said, Amen. So I guess this is not the only time in human history where nations have been in uproar, right? Yeah, there are some things, that, well, nothing's new under the sun, right? And so our own uh, time of tumult uh, in our nation and in the world, there's nothing new. And so God is fortress, God is strength, God is there for us and with us, amen. Uh, before we dive in, let me just offer a, a brief word of personal thanks to uh, the many who have expressed your concern and prayers uh, in the loss that our family has experienced. Uh, many of you know that my wife's uh, cousin, Scott Smith, whom we have been praying for for uh, quite a while at Greenwich, um, was diagnosed with ALS a little over two years ago, just three years into his marriage. Never married, married at 37 years old, um, and uh, did his, uh, had the honor of officiating at, at his wedding out in Kansas City back in 2017. And um, uh, he, he died uh, just before Christmas. And so uh, a weekend and a half ago, weekend, a week and a half ago, went on out and officiated at Scott's funeral. Very heartfelt, poignant. Um, bittersweet. There was so much to celebrate in his life, but that makes it just so painful uh, that at such a young age uh, with a, a, a young wife and two young children uh, to say goodbye to Scott. So we thank, thank you for your prayers and support in our time of loss. Uh, it was an interesting gathering. Um, I'm quite confident that not everyone who was gathered that day was... Um, participates in church. I have a, a strong reason to believe that. And so did my best to offer hope uh, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, read John 11, uh, I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus declaration there. And so anyway, prayers, uh, prayers for our family in this time of loss. 
Okay, <clears throat> it's a new year. And so time to start a new series. We've recovered Advent, so let's dive into something else, right? And, and really, it, <clears throat> it's going to be about the old, old story. Um, as you've noticed already at Greenwich, we are kind of going back to some basics. The Lord's Prayer uh, from the pulpit uh, will engage in that study for several weeks. Um, as the year unfolds, I anticipate that we will do more of these kind of basic foundational studies from the pulpit. Um, for several reasons, uh, so, so thinking about the Ten Commandments, the Great Commission, Jesus' call to love one another, these are the themes that we're um, putting on our preaching schedule for 2023. The reason is, <clears throat> you know, anytime you, you, you turn the calendar, it's a new year, but it's really just the same old life, right? So we can expect this year the same headaches and heartaches, the same uh, joys and celebrations, the, the same kinds of realities that we experience every year. There are, as I like to say, garden variety experiences in life. You know, there will be births that we will celebrate. We will have funerals. There will be graduations. There will be weddings and and the like. Uh, there will be decisions to make. There will be moves that, that people, you know, come, some will come to us at Greenwich. Others will leave us and relocate. Uh, this is part of being in a community our size, you know, a 500 plus member church. We, we have all this going on. And so in the midst of garden variety life, it's good to stay grounded in the basics and the foundational realities of the faith. But then every year has unique challenges. Uh, global pandemics, hello? <laughs> Who saw that one coming, you know, at the beginning of 2020? Um, and so this year, uh, I believe we are going to extend that conversation around our denominational alignment or perhaps a realignment that we may pursue. Um, and that has the potential for some upset. Uh, most of us just like things to stay calm and steady, and we don't like change a whole lot. Um, but if you, you know, been tuning into the Basement Academy, you know last fall I engaged in that pretty extended series <clears throat> about discipleship amid disagreement, and the context of that was denominational um, disagreement, and so went through a whole section on what are denominations and what do we do when the boundary lines are shifting. And so we're going to be extending that conversation more deeply into uh, the church family and uh, want to engage uh, a little more fully. So, so that, that also has us wanting to do, let's be back to basics and let's make sure we're grounded in our uh, beliefs together. And so what I'm proposing uh, for the next several weeks is to do a study kind of riffing off of the old hymn, How Firm a Foundation, Ye Saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent Word. And I want to talk about the foundation of our faith, these foundational beliefs. Uh, more particularly, I want to study a set of essential tenets. Tenet's not a word we use very often. It's kind of a belief. It's a statement, an affirmative statement of belief. Uh, the resource that I want to use, and we'll post this on the website so you can download. There's actually two documents. One is just a summary. This will be a summary, I'm kind of holding it up to the camera. Our Theological Essentials. This camera's getting a little fuzzy. doesn't like seeing that so close. Uh, and so that's a one pager that we'll post up, but, but this will be the document, the essential tenets of the fellowship community. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So these will be posted on the website. You can download them today or whenever. And over the coming weeks, I'm just going to kind of unpack what is uh, contained in these, uh, these documents. Um, there's a context for these documents. <clears throat> uh, dial back the calendar to 2010, and the Presbyterian General Assembly, our parent denomination, gathers 
back then it gathered annually. It has gone to an every other year sequence now. But the General Assembly gathers representatives from around the, the country, all our presbyteries, and decisions are made with regard to priorities for the church, the practices of the church. Um, we amend the Book of Order. Uh, language or structure gets amended sometimes. And then the beliefs get wrestled with. What do we believe? And in 2010, the General Assembly passed an overture, an amendment, we'll call it, that permitted the ordination to either the office of elder, deacon, or pastor, because we have three offices where we ordain people. The Assembly of 2010 passed a motion to permit the ordination of those who are in um, open and active, engaged, same-sex relationship. Prior to that, for the history of the Presbyterian Church, that had never been permitted before. It had been proposed, it had been discussed, it had been defeated, all of those proposals had been defeated, but in 2010, it was permitted, it was passed, and a convulsion happened in our denomination. Not everybody was happy with that. Subsequently, in 2014, the assembly met and passed a motion to change the definition of marriage. No longer is marriage a, a relationship between one man and one woman. It is now a, a, a relationship between any two persons. A, a, a covenant, so that language remained, but a covenant between any two persons. Traditionally a man and woman, but, but now it could be any arrangement. And so the, the denomination has been hiccuping and convulsing in, in some ways. And so in that context, a, a group of uh, pastors who had been meeting together for fellowship and encouragement and accountability for a number of years convened and they said, you know, we don't want to fight anymore the, 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 a more progressive voice and a progressive strength had, had risen to ascendancy in our denomination. And so we're not going to fight, but we want to be faithful. And so a fellowship of Presbyterians, very creative name, right? You know, ha. But the fellowship of Presbyterians was born. And what they did is they engaged in a theology project that says, we will define our beliefs clearly. Where we can partner with our parent denomination, we will stay in partnership. But where we feel the need to differentiate ourselves, we do not believe that. And so we wish to differentiate ourselves with a, a, a belief, a set of beliefs that we want to clarify. And so a theology project was engaged in that gave us these essential tenets. When you may be thinking, well, didn't we know what we believe in the first place? Yes and no. Uh, in the Presbyterian Church, we are a confessional church. I'm going to talk more about this uh, a little more in depth tomorrow, but we have a book of confessions, and we ordain men and women into uh, office. And when we ordain them, I'm looking for my little question here, so uh, when we ordain them, we ask them to affirm the essential tenets. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as contained in the confessions of our church as reliable expositions of what Scripture teaches us to believe and do? It's a long question, right? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as it contained in the, in the confessions of our church? So elders, deacons, and pastors over the many years of our church have been asked to affirm the essential tenets of the Reformed faith in our confessions. But here's the problem. Those essential tenets have never been identified or specifically enumerated and articulated. 
which has led to all manner of confusion. And so for me, the divinity of Jesus Christ is essential, but that is not essential to someone else. Well, it's essential because it's contained in the word of God. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. Well, I don't believe that, someone says. And so what the Fellowship of Presbyterians did is said, we will gladly articulate the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as contained in the confessions of our church that are indeed reliable expositions of what Scripture teaches. And so what I propose to do over the next several weeks is to just unpack this document of the essential tenets of the Fellowship of Presbyterians. Greenwich, uh, our elders, we were caught in that convulsion. So those of you who were at Greenwich back uh, in 2010, 12, 13, 14, remember our congregational meetings where, you know, these things would be discussed and people were up in arms. And I said, you know, time out there. Let, let's slow, slow everything down. <laughs> And so we studied the essential tenets. We affiliated formally with the Fellowship of Presbyterians. Eric and I and many of our elders went regularly to the national gatherings. Out of that Fellowship of Presbyterians, a new denomination has been born. We are not a part of that new denomination yet. We may be there eventually, but we are not. But we have chosen to draw the essential tenets into the, the, our life. And I've taught these before. Some of you may have gone through the Sunday school or other, I did an evening class one time where I went through the essential tenets, but I haven't done it for a while. <clears throat> and so it seems appropriate now as we start this new year in the midst of the changing realities of our world and this extended conversation about our own denominational uh, affiliation it seems appropriate to just go back to basics and let's study what are the foundational beliefs that we hold true here at Greenwich that arise out of our scripture. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today. As we begin the new year, want to introduce this new series, give it a little context. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more tomorrow about uh, our confessions and some of these realities and then we'll be off into uh, the document. So let me invite you to download the document. Uh, maybe you can mark it up as we go through it over the next several weeks, okay? Let, let's close with prayer. Father, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for this firm foundation that we have. There is bedrock, <laughs> there is truth, there is the solid rock, and Jesus taught us that when we build our house upon the rock, then when the storms come, that house will stand. And that is our desire. And so, Lord, as we lean into this new year, as we continue on through this life, and as we continue on in a shared life here at Greenwich, we pray your mercy, your kindness, your favor, that your wisdom and humility and courage and compassion would abide and abound uh, among us, in us, and through us, that we might be the faithful followers of Jesus that you call us to be. And so we make our prayer now, as ever, in his name, even as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, may God remind you, keep you, give you that firm foundation for your faith this day and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat>